Fritz Lang's M is what I call an Ur movie. It's an original source movie that has spawned, influenced hundreds, perhaps hundreds, maybe thousands of other movies. And when you watch this movie, you can think of other movies. And when you watch these other movies, you can think of M. Recently, for example, I've watched a number of manhunt movies where a criminal or someone accused of a crime is being hunted by a large group of people. Think about Kurosawa's High and Low. Also, The Fugitive. Also, The Ballad of Gregorio Cortez. I've watched those in recent months. and I thought, man, all of these movies are really honoring and paying tribute to M, where there's a long sequence in which a serial killer, a murder of children, is being hunted down by a lot of people. And this movie is also a serial killer movie. There's been umpteen thousand of those. And this movie is, you know, a lot of material from this movie is used in later serial killer movies. There's a shot in here, for example. Reminds me a lot of Zodiac. In fact, the real life Zodiac killer, who knows, he may be copying this movie. But there are a number of pieces of this movie Fritz Lang, a total genius uh, in film in a lot of ways, makes Metropolis, then he makes this movie. Those two movies are fabulous together and the source of a lot of movie material across the 20th and now 21st centuries. The movie features Peter Lorre, I think perfectly cast as a serial killer murderer. Oh, so disgusting, but he is such a great actor and he, he takes... He really dominates a whole scene near the end. To me, one thing that makes this movie great, maybe the thing, is the last 15 minutes of the movie, which I'll have to talk about later because I have to spoil. But Peter Lorre is featured there. Really, really great. Now, a lot of critics have made a lot about this movie's historical time and place. Weimar Republic, Germany, after World War One, and the despair and the poverty and so on in that period of time. And you can see this movie talking about democracy and general political philosophy, who gives justice, who administers the law, who has the right to do so, what kind of world are we in where everybody's paranoid, we're in a police state, all these questions come up in this movie, perhaps depicting the atmosphere of its time and place. I want to analyze this movie from a more abstract point of view because I don't know the time and place very well. If you know Weimar Republic, Germany, go ahead and comment on it and what it has to do with this movie. But I have some other thoughts about this movie I'd like to share. This movie is very unique. You know, movie history individuals are featured in the focus of so many, in fact, probably almost all movies. But this movie really doesn't have any individuals in it other than the serial killer played by Peter Lorre, maybe the police inspector, but really it's hard to recognize and, and remember anybody. I don't think anybody has a name in this movie besides those two characters. There's also a blind man selling balloons that we remember, but basically the characters are groups of people instead of individuals. You have the police themselves, the police force, you have the criminal underground, and both the heads of that and then the workers who work on behalf of the criminals. And you have the beggars on the street who actually help the criminals out. And so then the, there are groups of people who are introduced and then they, they're threaded throughout the movie until the very end when you see several groups of them. And also another group are the mothers of children who are who appear at the beginning and end and, and a couple other times in the movie. For the most part, we don't know names and we don't see them as individuals, at least I don't. Now to me, you can side with a number of figures in the movie. The, at the end of the movie, here we're gonna spoil things. The Peter Lorre character is caught and he begs the criminal underground who are forming a kangaroo court in order to try and kill him. He begs them not to kill him in part because they're being hypocritical, they're criminals too, in part because he says he, he's compelled to kill children, which is a sad, sick, and twisted thing, of course, but his claim is that all evil or a lot of evil, or his particular evil, is compulsion, whereas other people have a choice. This is an interesting question about psychology, criminality, brain chemistry, so neuroscience later in the 20th century, is how much are people compelled to do the bad deeds that they do and how much should we hold them responsible individually for that law traditionally has held people as agents of their own world and they and they have free choice in order to commit crimes or not and they should be convicted as guilty and they should be punished in some way if they commit a crime but the guy's trying to get off at the end of the movie saying he's compelled and there's an interesting you know case for that in a number of areas you know for example in religion certain religions would say that we're all predestined and that we're maybe we're all robots or something like that. Not all, not going all that way, but anybody who's a determinist might say that in the area of psychology or religion or science. Now I have some sympathy for that argument, I suppose, but here we're dealing with a child serial killer whom I have no sympathy for 
And I find myself as a parent and as an older guy on the side of the criminal underground in this movie, and here's why. I find that the criminal underground becomes the legitimate institution of authority and justice in this movie, which is totally ironic. Yes, they're depicted as a hypocritical mob at the end. They are a kangaroo court, sort of symbolizing perhaps Weimar Republic democracy, and, you know, the mob mentality of democracy or, or a large group of people acting in order to harm one particular person. That is one way people do watch this movie. I find the criminal underground, though, they have formed a league in order to make the streets clean and to get justice for the women and the parents in this movie who have had their children murdered on the at, by the hands of this murderer. Meanwhile, the police in this movie are a police state. They raid all nightly all kinds of places they are snooping they have no warrants of course this is germany so i don't know what their exact system of justice they seem to have a lot of leeway a lot of authority and they're actually stealing i think from a number of people when they're doing these looting and raids and they're totally ineffective at catching the criminal other than the police ex inspector who sort of figures out via circumstantial evidence who the killer could be which i think is a coincidence actually yet the criminal underground the ones who organize who put up their money who take a lot of risks and who go and actually catch the guy so even though they are maybe hypocritical because they do bad deeds themselves that is an ad hominem and it's not really uh, you know everybody who's ever administered justice is has done evil in some way so it's not wrong for an evil person to administer justice in my opinion and that's i think the case at the end of the movie where the mothers cry out or people on behalf of the mothers cry hey this guy's killed children you cannot let him run around. The streets are not safe, and we're living in a world of paranoia, a police state that's been generated by this guy. So should he be around? Now, This I'm not arguing for capital punishment, but this movie sort of could be read that way. Like Maybe people like this should be put away, or something should be done with them, more than just what the state's going to do here. In the criminal court, they actually argue that we should kill him, capital punishment because the state's just going to call him insane and put him away and he's going to live as a benefactor of the state. The taxpayers are going to pay for him just to be put away. Meanwhile, he's killed all kinds of kids in this movie. He's a total predator. So, but there are gigantic questions here. What is the law? Who is a legit authority for the law? What are right punishments? Should people who are psychologically deranged or serial killers even you know, should they be tried in the same way as ordinary criminals? What in the world is an ordinary criminal? There are probably a hundred, maybe even a thousand philosophical questions about law, justice, morality, politics at the end of this movie. That's why I find the last 15 minutes, if nothing else in this movie, this whole movie bores you. The last 15 minutes bring up a rapid fire series of really profound questions that I think are universal and worth exploring. Now they're particular to the time and place, 1930s Germany, but I find them to be relevant to all kinds of situations throughout human history. And I think Long did a great work here in, in thinking about what are vigilantes and are they legitimate? Is the police state a problem or not? Who's the real problem in this movie? And what will make the city be safe? which is the mother's plea at the very end of this movie that someone needs to take care of the children, someone needs to look out for them. That sort of cry still has yet to be hated in at least Western civilization, not global civilization. Who's going to look out for the kids? Who's going to protect them? We still have child you know, sex scandals, pedophile scandals all over the world. And so who is heeding this movie? which is 80 years old, 90 years old at this point. That's one of the ideas in this movie is to bring up, raise a number of profound questions and then have the sort of plea that something has to be done. Look out for the children. Because here in this movie, very seriously depicted child predation and a disgusting serial killer. So I threw out a number of questions and possibilities. I said whose side I'm on. I'm, I'm curious how you watch this movie. What do you think about it? What, how do you come away with when you watch this movie? What questions, ideas, interpretations do you have? Let us know in the comments. Please subscribe to this channel for more great content. Thanks and have a great day.